Hello fellow woodworkers and welcome to this week's edition of the Garage Workshop and in this week's video we're going to be a new sliding miter gauge for my table saw. Roll the intro. So in this week's video I would like to create a more effective uh, miter gauge for my Rage 5S table saw. Now a couple of the projects that I've done recently, um, I've gone to use the uh, mitre gauge and to be honest with you, although it's well made, it's sort of solid uh, cast aluminium, uh, it's just not very good. There's a little bit of play in the runner, uh, not a huge amount, but there is a little bit, but it's just not very effective and I quite often find that because this um, length of material is not that big, um, it makes it a bit more difficult to use. So in this week's video, what I'm planning to do is to make like a mitre saw uh, sled or a, uh, a table saw sled, um, but using this existing uh, mitre gauge. Now, a while ago, you'll remember, I had a problem with my Evolution table saw and Evolution very kindly uh, replaced it for me. And when they did, I'd sent the original saw back, I hadn't sent all the um, additional bits back. So when they replaced it for me, um, they sent me a completely new one. So I've actually got two of these. So I'm gonna keep the original one, but this one, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is take it apart, get the rail out, and then I can start thinking about how I'm going to make the mitre gauge. I'm not gonna do anything complicated. This is gonna be a really simple build, but hopefully an effective one. But one thing I am gonna do, which I think might be slightly different is I'm going for much more of a sort of sled type so it's not going to be a thick piece of solid wood i'm going to have a thinner piece of wood but put like a frame around it or sort of a bit like a catamaran is the only way i can really describe it um so that it's not big and heavy um and obviously it's i'm not going to lose the cutting depth by having a massive thick chunk of wood for so the first thing to do is take this out uh, take this apart and then let's look and see how much play we've got in the actual mitre saw slot so welcome to this week's video. Uh, can I just give you a reminder to subscribe as you're uh, watching this. So I just unhooked all of the pieces uh, from this um, sort of mitre slide gauge type uh, thing. It was actually a bit tricky to get off, uh, particularly the bolt at the end, which I had to persuade uh, off camera with a sledgehammer. So I've got the um, strip off, the mitre strip off, and when I put it in, um, it is a pretty good fit, I have to be honest, but you can see, hopefully, uh, you can see uh, there is a little bit of play uh, in it. Now, weirdly, uh, when I used my mitre saw, uh, when I used the table saw outside last year, um, when we had a really hot day, the table must have warmed up a little bit because this mitre, uh, so it, di it didn't move as much as it's doing now. So what the plan is, is just to get a piece of wood, uh, put it on there, and then I'm going to put a line on the bottom and fix uh, this. I'll probably put it in uh, the other way. Um, so I'll mark it and fix it so that it'll slide up one. Now there is another rail here, so there is a potential, if I can get another one of these, to uh, make a bigger sort of mitre, um, sort of table saw sled. But for this, the only thing I'm focusing on is just using, getting something that I can use to make really accurate cuts against the blade. So the next thing is to find a piece of wood. I'm going to go for a sort of 9 or 12 mil piece of wood. So let's raid the scrap pile and see what we've got. Okay, so I found this piece of 12 mil uh, hardwood plywood that I had lying around uh, the garage. It's a bit uh, sketchy on the front of the back, but it will do for what I need it to do. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just run it through the table saw and take off all these drill holes. I'll give you a little bit of a close up of what they look like. But the actual wood um, <clears throat> is flat. As you can see, a lot of the pieces of wood I've got in my sort of scrap pile are a little bit bowed. So I'm actually gonna use it this way around anyway. But the first thing I'm gonna do is sort of mill it back a bit, take all of those um, screw hole uh, holes out, and then at least I'm gonna have four straight edges. So let's do that now. Following on from the issues I had with my shop vac last week, I thought I'd give my DeWalt um, shop vac a chance this going, it was much better. Okay, so I've run it through uh, the table saw. I've taken off all 
of the uh, screw holes from when I used this piece of wood previously. Just one thing you um, would have noticed, and I'd really appreciate some help in the comments. My riving knife on my uh, table saw has become bent. What happened was I had something that when it was folded up, it was leaning against and I didn't realize. So over the sort of period of a week or so, it was pushed sort of under, it was under pressure and it's now slightly bent. I have tried my best to very, very carefully sort of tap it flat. But when I look at it, uh, looking down, it looks exactly in line with the blade, but every time I feed a piece of wood through, it's catching it and I have to sort of pull it across to get it in the right place. Evolution don't sell replacements of that and I just can't seem to get it exactly as it was. So any of you that have had a similar problem or if you've got any ideas, please let me know in the comments because it's really annoying me now. So I've got this done. Next thing to do is to uh, measure it up uh, against the side, see what si uh, size wood I need. I'm gonna put it through this way. Um, and obviously this does have an extension rail uh, built into it. So what I'm gonna do is make it a sort of a little bit bigger uh, than it would look like it needs to be. Uh, just so if I use it with the extension rail in, I've got a little bit more guidance, but I have now got a completely flat edge on all four sides. So let's get up measuring, see how far we want it to be and then I can cut it down to size. So you might have noticed in my recent videos, uh, hopefully you've noticed, I am trying my best to do a lot more accurate measuring um, just to make sure that my final uh, pieces are the size and the dimensions that I want them to be. So I did really take my time here and double and triple checked all the measurements. With those measurements checked, it was simply a case of transferring them uh, to my piece of board, um, which, to be honest with you, I was more probably more careful uh, than I needed to be at this point, um, but I just wanted to get it absolutely 100% right. And just joining up, even joining up all of the lines, I just made sure that I had the ruler sort of on the outside mark, if you see what I mean. So as I just mentioned, I'm having a little bit of an issue with the riving uh, knife on my table saw. Um, sometimes it's okay and, and the riving knife sort of catches the cut, but quite often I have to sort of manually uh, guide it through and it does get very, very uh, frustrating. So I just checked when I put it through that it was exactly the right size and luckily it was. So here I just slid the um, rail in, the T-track in, and I was just lining up. You can't see it's just out of shot, but the piece of wood is butted up against the blade. So <clears throat> I was looking to get a sort of the right angle, if you see what I mean. Uh, and then I marked it on and I marked both the inner and outside uh, sections. I then transferred those marks I'd made to the wood, um, just basically extending them uh, back. I have got to give a shout out to this, what I would call a T-square, Carpenter Square uh, from Timu, which was in my Timu haul video, which I will put a link to in the description. This is a really nice piece of kit and I think, you know, it wasn't very expensive. It was in terms of Timu, but it wasn't very expensive at all. Um, but it is a really, really lovely um, piece of equipment and it's something that I've used a huge amount. And it's nice sometimes when you see, you know, YouTubers who do sort of videos or when they've been gifted products, you see it once and that's it. But this one, I, I literally now use it on every build. I can't recommend it highly enough. Then I just checked um, with the slide that I transferred the marks properly and I just checked everything was straight. I then went back to the table saw. This is just an off cut from one of the pieces of wood just to make the sort of three strips that are gonna sit underneath the main um, board. Um, I just wanted to basically get three strips that were uh, roughly the right size, uh, which I was able to do. So I got them all leveled off. I then uh, leveled them off under the Evolution uh, light saw. And do you know, I have not had to charge the battery yet. It's quite amazing. I then marked up uh, the strip that the uh, rail was going to join. Um, I took my time, I actually did this a couple of uh, times just to make sure I got it in the right place. I'm still wanted to pre-drill the holes as well. Having said I was going to pre-drill them, what I did for this strip actually was just to sink some really small 
uh, screws in and doing that just allowed me to sort of keep it in place. Um, I didn't, you don't need massive uh, screws. The ones I put in um, were are too big really. I just didn't need screws that size. So I went for smaller ones. The only thing that was concerning me was, as you can see, the hole, um, the sort of hole that the screw would fit into looked massive and I thought the screw would pull through. But to be honest, it, it didn't. And the little screws that I used really kept uh, the wood in place and kept it exactly where I needed it to be. And it's going to be glued on anyway, so those screws aren't of any consequence. And I can always go back later and change them and make them longer if I want to. The next stage was just to glue it up, um, which I did. And I clamped it together. What I actually did, first of all, which you might not have seen off camera, then I put glue on the one that had the strip on it. Um, and I just wanted that glue to sort of slightly go off and go tacky when I attached it, but spread loads of glue out with my uh, best glue spreader I've got in the garage workshop. As you can see, the row, the wood is quite bowed there, so I just flattened that out with the clamps when I was gluing it. So there's probably a better way of doing this. I went for a very uh, low-tech approach where I literally uh, leveled it up, put it on, and uh, flattened it out. Obviously, you can see at that point, the bit that I'd done on the side came off, but I restuck it on. So, more precise marking. Uh, this is for the strip of wood that is going to be the sort of upright on the uh, mitre gauge slide. So I just did it, it was just 12 uh, centimetres, just to give it a bit of space. So the next thing to do is run it through the table saw. It's quite a new and innovative uh, angle there, which I could wish I could say I did on purpose, but the camera had slumped and I hadn't seen it, to be honest. So I used a piece of the same material here just to mark an area where I knew I could pre-drill uh, because when you're drilling into plywood, particularly thin plywood, it has a tendency to split, which I didn't want. Then it was just a case of pre-drilling all the holes, which I really took uh, my time doing so I wanted to get them right. I did make a slight mistake. I was off centre on one, but I pre-drilled all the holes and then changed the drill a bit. And when I actually picked up the wood, I just sort of pre-drilled them again uh, with a longer, um, uh, a longer drill bit. I'm going to say straight off. I think I did this in the most cat-handed way uh, possible, and I and my filming is just appalling here. So apologies for that. But what I did there was I had pre-drilled. Uh, from the back on one side. You can also see a gap there where the wood is slightly bowed, which I didn't realise until I put it together, but luckily screwing it in pulled the two pieces together. So I did check the angles as I went, but I just put in all of the big screw holes that were going through the main ones and then the little ones, and I just put in a little, literally, probably five mil, 10 mil uh, pre-drill, and then I just put the screws in and fixed it. And luckily it was nice and sturdy. With that, I checked the angle uh, and then it was time to give it its first uh, run out. And I was really pleased to say it flowed so smoothly up and down the track. Uh, when I set it, I did have to uh, increase the blade um, and it is sitting a little bit higher than I perhaps initially wanted. But in terms of functionality, absolutely brilliant. Exactly uh, what I wanted it to be and working exactly how I wanted it to work. So that was a massive success. So fellow woodworkers, you've just seen uh, the mitre, uh, the mitre gauge in action, and I've extended the table so you could see uh, how that leg works. I can use it without that. The only thing I would say is when I do that, it does slightly um, lean over, so I will probably always make sure that I've got that extension out, but it just gives it more stability when I'm making a cut anyway. But I'm very pleased. Uh, with how it's turned out. It's exactly what I wanted it to be. A couple of little things. This uh, bit at the back is a little bit um, loose. So I might just put a little bit of a reinforcement uh, strip down uh, the side here. But as you saw, it cuts the wood, it flows really freely, and there's not much movement in it at all. Um, so exactly what I set out to do. A really, really simple uh, build, but one that's gonna get a lot of use in the garage workshop. Thank you so much for joining me on this week's video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Please can I ask you to subscribe, like, and uh, comment. If you're new to the channel, please make sure you subscribe. The algorithm tells me that a lot of people that watch the videos aren't subscribed and it really helps the channel. Don't forget to hit the like and don't forget to comment. And for my regular viewers, thank you so much for joining me again this week. 
Take care and I'll catch you on next week's edition of the Garage Workshop. Take care everyone.